uh, lysosomal storage disorders are a group of disorders that are characterized by accumulation of material within the cell, specifically an organelle called the lysosome. The lysosome is, um, uh, function is to break down complex molecules. And when you're deficient in one of those enzymes, those complex molecules start to accumulate and transform that cell and cause cellular dysfunction. Once those cells are transformed and they're abnormal, they can then deposit throughout the body. Depending on the type of lysosomal storage disorder, you can have manifestations in the heart, the lungs, the bone, the cartilage, and the brain, as well as the kidneys. So lysosomal storage disorders encompass several different uh, disorders. and one of them, uh, or a group of them, is called the mucopolysaccharidoses, or MPS for short. Within the mucopolysaccharidoses uh, themselves, there are several forms of it. Each of those MPS disorders are distinguished by a specific enzyme deficiency. And so there's several types, leading to accumulation of glycosaminoglycans, or GAGs. And those GAGs deposit throughout the body. They can deposit in the eye, causing corneal opacification, can deposit in the brain, causing a variety of problems with learning um, or vessel development. It can deposit within the liver and spleen and cause, cause enlargement. And it actually can cause uh, uh, cartilage problems as well as skeletal deformities called a dysostosis multiplex. Of the uh, mucopolysaccharidoses, there, um, this, there are several types. Um, one of them is ultra-rare, called Sly syndrome, or MPS7. And up until last year, there was no treatment for MPS7. And as of uh, this past November 2017, the FDA approved the first treatment for Sly syndrome, which was intravenous recombinant enzyme replacement therapy. And here at NYU School of Medicine, we had the opportunity to test that drug in the youngest infant affected with MPS7. That infant presented initially to our uh, sister hospital called Bellevue Hospital, uh, presenting with a very severe form of MPS7, non-immune hydrops fatalis. This was diagnosed prenatally by overwhelming fluid overload in the patient. The mother decided to go ahead with the pregnancy and the infant was born. Diagnosis came at three and a half months and I was alerted to the, to the existence of this patient. And I knew that there was a company working on this drug, and I asked for compassionate use uh, to be used for this patient. And so under my own emergency IND, I created a trial and infused that infant at four and a half months. And that infant was quite severe with severe cardiopulmonary compromise, uh, requiring resuscitation multiple times a day, heavily sedated for many months. And as we infused the enzyme, the child was slowly able to wean from sedation and become conscious started to achieve certain milestones over that time period and stabilized enough to be discharged to a chronic care facility. So it was very successful. These, the, the MPS disorders themselves range in severity from mild to severe, and so every child's outcome is different. Uh, the hope is that we at least stabilize the disease. Uh, children who were on the enzyme who are older than five years old showed improved walking, improved pulmonary function, so that was important because this, the deposition of these gags can impair that over time. Uh, the initial outcomes are very small because these are small trials with an ultra-rare disease. And so we'll be monitoring here at NYU as one of the major sites, the um, prospectively how these children do over the next 10 years as part of, our, uh, as part of the company's post-marketing um, post requirement. Uh, so hopefully, just like we did with MPS6, um, we will see longer-term outcomes uh, in the future. But initially, they were able to show some stability in pulmonary function and walking.